so for the next mask I make, I wanted to do something I've never done before, which is uh, put eyeballs in the sculpt with those little uh, tabs that stick out. So you mold it with the eye forms in the mold. So that way, when the mask is out of the mold, I can actually pop in eyeballs into the mask instead of painting them on. Uh, but I wanted to do a character with larger eyeballs. Now, I, had, I made this large form a few years ago. I believe, I remember, if I remember correctly, it was a Christmas ornament that I made a silicone mold of. I molded like 80% of it. So I want to do a large eye like this, but you can't buy art forms that I know of like that. So what I, my idea is to take like a screw like this and make a, take the silicone mold, pour some UltraCal 30 in it, and then drill a hole into the UltraCal and take the screw and screw it in and make that the eye form. So I just poured last night some UltraCal into the silicone mold. And I'm going to remove this right now. And I have to make another one because I'm using two eyes. So now we have a solid UltraCal thing. And later on, I'm gonna get the drill. I'm gonna drill a hole here. Probably have to have it go about halfway in. And we will see how that goes. All right, so I took my two UltraCal eye forms and the drill, and I drilled a hole that would work with this screw. And so now I have these eye forms and I ha and the screws went in, you know, there's about more than half is coming up, but there's about a good amount in there, but they wouldn't really stay in that good. Um, drilling into UltraCal worked, but it didn't really, the screw wasn't in, it was in the hole, but it wasn't in very tight. So I mixed up a little bit of Gorilla Glue epoxy and basically painted it onto the whole end of the screw, the whole surface that was going in the hole that I pl placed it in last night and left it. So as you can see, it's a little shiny there. But this is fine because this is gonna be, you know, cut off when the, um, it's just gonna be a hole that the iPhone will be going there, so that's fine. Um, but it looks, it's holding, so I think this is gonna work. This is all an experiment. I've never made these before, but you know, this is, so this should work. So now I can start a sculpture and put those in where the eyes are going. So we'll see what's gonna happen. With I think this is gonna work. Okay, here's a sneak peek of the sculpt I started yesterday morning. This is very, very rough. But here are the eyes that I told you about. These are the teeth from the Gunther mask. These are the horns from a different mask. And these are the reptilian little spiky things from a different mask. I'm recycling a lot of pieces for this. But this is a kind of a wacky creature. I want to do something a bit over the top. It's very bizarre looking, but that's where I am after one day of playing around. It's probably going to change a lot. I haven't measured this thing, but I want to see how the circumference of the head is. So I'm going to measure this. That's 40 inches around. Um, I'm just starting to detail this thing now. I want to show also that the horns, these were from a mask I made two years ago, plastic. These things also from a mask from a few years ago. And the teeth are plastic too. Um, I'm going to try to sculpt reptilian scales on his skin. So that and the details and the skin texture is what I'm going to be working on next. Here we are today. I started to sculpt the reptile skin texture on this thing. You can see it started in there. Put the horns and everything back in to see how it looks. This is taking a while. I just started it. 
lots to go, but I got it all. The entire mask has this beginnings of this lizard-like, snake-like skin texture. So this is a very bizarre creature. Um, trying something different. And that's where we are right now. Did a lot more work sculpting the reptilian skin texture on this. Getting those, uh, a lot of those grooves a little deeper, finessing them a little bit. It's a lot of work, but something I've always wanted to do. I'll show you the back. Still have to add texture to it. I mean, it's a lot of going over it, thick and deepening some lines. Uh, cleaning up the edges, but I still have to now go back in and add texture back to it. But uh, it's a lot of ground to cover. But I think it's gonna look really cool when it's painted and everything's on there, the horns and the eyeballs are popped in and, you know, coming along. It's mold making day down here in the basement. This guy's all set. Got all my stuff out here. Just making some coffee upstairs and then I will come down here and start making the mold. It is a little after 4.30 in the morning. I always like to start bright and early on a beautiful Sunday morning. It's gonna be 70 degrees today, later uh, this morning, early afternoon. So finally, it's March, it's March 6th today. And that's unusual temperature for a early day in March. So I'm gonna take advantage of it. And that's why I'm making the mold today because I'll be able to use the hose later to really spray out the mold and clean out all the residue clay, which is great because in the winter time, it's very difficult to use a garden hose in New Jersey if it's cold and freezing because you can't. So, ready to, ready to make this mold. Excited. And I just put the clay wall up and the um, keys are in there. Got a nice clay wall going here. My saran wrap in the front just to protect the, the sculpture from any ultra cal. I don't want any dripping onto the front of the sculpt while I'm doing the back. And, uh, I am gonna start uh, with my splash coat now, yay. Well, the back half of the mold is done and I just uh, laid it down and I'm about to start the uh, front half of this mold. I'm not making it too thick because this is a pretty big head, but yeah, so far so good. It's the first time I've ever done a mask where, like I said earlier, where these eye forms are gonna be part of the front of the mold so I can have eye sockets now these I made, so these are actually screws that are drilled in. You can see I had put a little bit of a epoxy in there to keep the screws tight. So, you know, but this is gonna, the front of the mold, this, the ultracal is gonna attach itself to this permanently. Anyway, this is gonna be embedded inside. But I've never done, the, oh, I just hope it works out. Um, anyway, I gotta get back to making this mold. Well, the mold came out good. It's right here. Um, I started, Five o'clock this morning. It is now 3.30 in the afternoon. The basement's cleaned up. The mold's been cleaned out for hours. Had a few small air bubbles that I fixed. You can kind of see that the little white specks here and there, that's where I had to fix some small air bubbles. Uh, as you can see, as we all know, this is a very big head. Here's my hand inside the front of the mold. <laughs> uh, I'll be pouring some latex in this in an hour or so. I'm very excited to do that, but for now, I'm going to let it sit out. I'm all prepped up here. Got my latex, got my airbrush, got my Gorilla Tape, got my chip brush, and I got the mold. Well, the mold was made on Sunday. Today is Wednesday. Uh, it's, such, it's, it's such a big mask that I am keeping it in front of the fan for three days because it's got so many deep, crevices. I want this thing to be completely dry. 
and I'm not taking any chances. So I have it in front of the fan till tonight. Look at what we have here for our new mask that's in the mold still drying out. We have our horns, we have our big eyeballs, we have our teeth, and we have our little um, spiky things that go on top of his head. They're all molded, plastic, hollow. These eyes are gonna be big, and I'm so excited because this is the first time I'll be inserting painted eyeballs into a mask. These are not, you know, they're hollow, but hopefully it all works out. Well, the first cast of this mask is out of the mold. I stuffed it with plastic bags. I just plopped the horns and the eyeballs and the teeth and the scales on his head in. They're not glued in or anything, obviously, but, and the teeth are taped in. I just want to see what it looks like all together, but it looks pretty cool. And I'm very happy how this came out. And luckily the mold came out good. It's a very large head. Hopefully this thing will be wearable, but Tonight, I'll take it off, take the bags out and the horns out and stick it on my head and see where my eyes line up. But yeah, I'm pretty excited. I can't wait to finish him. There's so much to do. But uh, that's him. Finished up the seams. Just gave him a little bit of a wash to get any residue off him. The seams came out really good on this mask. You can see him a little bit. The seam is right here. Very faint. And I'm not taking it down anymore. That's enough. So he's going to be fun to paint. I'm excited to finally finish him. Well, it's not mask painting day because it's Friday morning. Uh, early. It's about a quarter to six in the morning. But I came down. Do a few things before I get ready for work. Um, I painted. Let me turn the light on here. So he's been, his seams have been totally uh, cut down and filed down so you can't see him anymore. So he's ready to go. He's ready for painting. Um, and as far as all the horns and uh, eyeballs and stuff, I painted a base coat. I made a very light um, tan color to start with because they're all going to be bone. And they're going to be stained and made dirty and made organic looking. And I put a little bit on the teeth, but, you know, these are just beginning stages. But for the eyeballs for him, I decided, I went and got my some reference I had a couple of years ago. And I just made this little printout of these interest, uh, different interesting, um, some of these are birds, some of these are reptiles. And I really think for this character, that eye, I really like it. So I'm going to try to emulate that eye. So I just put a base coat of yellow to start, but I, I'm going to have to work on that uh, over the weekend. But yeah, I think that's going to look really cool in his face. Anyway, that's it for now. Okay, so that's the eyeball reference I wanted to paint. Here are the eyes. They're a little, they're shiny because I just put epoxy on them, but I hand painted these. They're big. Here's my fist. Those are the eyes. They're very big. And they're very wet right now. And I just painted uh, three layers of paint on the mask. So I've started to be painted. Um, two different greens and one yellow to get this going. But uh, the next step will be Hooker's Green, which is a, this acrylic paint. And I'm going to do a wash of that once this dries. That's going to really start to bring out the layered look. Uh, this mask is going to have a lot of different steps to get it to where I want it to be. But I'm very excited that we're finally getting to paint this thing. All right, so this is, do, this is, Hooker, this is um, Hooker Green acrylic paint. And I mixed up some, very watery, it's not thick. And I'm just using a chip brush and I'm brushing it onto the mask. And this is just a wash. After the first few layers of paint, I airbrushed on. I've done this particular paint scheme for the green on a mask a few years ago, and I liked it so much that I'm pretty much following the same 
colors and direction I did for that mask because I keep everything, I keep notes of every mask I paint. And I thought it worked out well, so for the initial main skin color of this mask, I'm doing this, following the same recipe. Okay, now that all the paint has been uh, chip brushed on, we'll have some paper towels here. I'm just gonna just pat it, lift up a lot of that excess paint. I'm just staining, I'm sp leaving a stain, a wash on the mask. So it's, I don't need puddles of green paint. And I'm just tapping it, lightly patting it where I see a lot of excess watery paint. And it's leaving this really warm green, but it's also staying in those sculpted grooves too. This is one of the most fun parts of this type of mask because I've been, been putting on a watery black acrylic paint wash to this and that brings out all the detail and texture in the sculpture, all that, all the little, the little areas that I use texture pads on because that black paint is staying in there and a lot of it's going to dry off or I'll be blotted away, but it really just brings the skin to life. I love this. This is really what I've been waiting to do. Um, I may hit this with a water bottle once I cover it because I don't want it too thick because this is, you know, still have a lot to paint, but I was really looking forward to this stage of the paint job because this is where I can see all that texture I put, spent a day doing. It's going to make sure I cover everything here. And it's going to, see the black is going to get inside all these little sculpted grooves in the skin, which took, you know, a while to do because they all connect. And I've never attempted to do skin like, I've always wanted to do reptile skin like this, sculpted. But I, it wasn't as difficult, it was, took time, but it wasn't as difficult as I thought. But you really have to take your time and making sure it all works. All right, so that is sufficiently blotted and it's wet. But I'll let that dry naturally. But I'm really happy with how this is coming along. It's starting to really look like lizard skin. I might actually, when this dries, do another black wash. So we're gonna see. First, I gotta let it dry and see how it looks. All right, I just did another black wash uh, on the mask. And I think that's enough now. I think it's looking really nice. It's wet, I just literally finished, but uh, the black has gotten into the grooves. Still very shiny looking because it's wet, but it's really, the skin tone is getting really, really interesting and fun and I really like it now. Okay, this thing's painted. Uh, I just uh, finished glossing him a little bit 10 minutes ago, so he's all painted. He looks a little weird because he doesn't have his teeth, his horns, his spikes, or his eyeballs. So, and the teeth, the gums aren't done, and they're not, they're started, but that's the last thing. And the horns and all that stuff is over there. I just want to put them in so that the, the iris is, I don't want to put it in tilted, so I got to be careful here. And this is dry, I did, you know, the gloss is, is dry, so. Just gonna insert this, lift it up, making sure that the pupil is facing the right direction. And it should pop right. I wanna turn this a little bit before I pop it in. Lift this. Turn that, it's kinda, of, oh, up there. Okay, let me just turn this, put my hand in here, pop it in. Hopefully it'll look good. All right, well that, you know, looks good. Now hopefully the other one will look good too. All 
right. Right. Okay. Whoa. And if it doesn't look good, I can always take it out and turn it in the put it in the right way. That looks nice. Pop it in. Yeah, okay, that worked. Good. I think well, this one could just turn a little bit more this way. So it's that way. A little bit. Let me just see. Yes, maybe a little bit like that. Better. All right, well, well, we're all set for the morning. Um, the mask is painted, the eyes are in, the horns and the head plates are stained and painted and dry. They're gonna be epoxied into their places and then they will be painted when that, when they're set and that glue is dry, they will be painted with matte gloss. I don't want them to be shiny. Uh, the teeth are started, but they need to be painted. The gums, the rest of the teeth, the grime, when all these things are painted and done, well, these will be glued in tomorrow, but the, when the teeth are completely painted and done, they will be glued into the mouth, and then the mask will be done. Well, it's Sunday morning, early, and I just um, mixed up a bunch of epoxy and put the horns and the head plates in the head. They're drying now. I added a um, raw umber wash to the horns and the plates and the head give it a little bit of more of a warm feel. It was a little too cold looking, the horns. They're still wet, but that little bit of brown makes a big difference to me. Anyway, uh, teeth are still drying on the floor with another coat for the gums. After I do that, I'm gonna put a black wash over them to dirty them up a bit, and then I will be gluing them in, and then that mask will be done. So, almost at the finish line. And there he is, folks. Sweet dreams. All finished, painted, everything's stuck on them. It's completely done.